Hi, I'm Shannon Betcher. I'm Director of Product Management in the Windows Group. I've been on the project from the very beginning. Uh, I've been on it for about five years, so it's super exciting to, for me to see Beta 2 coming together. And uh, today it's available for IT pros and developers uh, from uh, TechNet and from MSDN. So get your hands on it. We'll take a look at some of the things that are great about it, some of the personal things that I like, and I want to sort of tailor my comments uh, toward the, the IT pro and the developer uh, space today. Um, so, uh, first thing, a couple things people ask me about, like what what is uh, what's great about Windows Vista? You know, what do I tell uh, my neighbor about uh, Windows Vista about it being great? It's going to be safer and easier to use. It's going to uh, help you find information easier than you've ever been able to do before. It's got great new entertainment features, uh, everything from TV, movies, photos, videos, and the like, um, and. It's going to be great for laptops and mobile PCs, and so I want to show some things uh, about that uh, today. So let's start out just uh, being being uh, easy to use here. Um, I mean, everybody's pretty familiar with the the user experience and the, the user interface here. One of the things that I really think is is interesting, um, both for the the IT Pro. Uh, as well as for the developer space that really benefits the end user is the new help system. Um, so, for example, we've got a dynamic help system here that, that talks to servers and is updated regularly, but it also has some really interesting tools in it. So let me do a quick search here. And um, it's going to bring back some results here about notification icons and, and working with those. And if I click on this, um, one of the things we have built in here is some, what we call some dynamic help wizards or some automated help wizards uh, in the product that walk people through how to accomplish some of these simple tasks. So for those of you who get the phone calls uh, uh, to, for help uh, from your family members and friends, um, we've got some great new uh, features uh, in the product to, to help uh, teach people how to use the product uh, as well as uh, to hopefully reduce the number of support calls. So I see this, this first one here, I mean, do it automatically. So it doesn't just show you how to do it and say click here, click here, click there. And actually, if you want, it'll just do it. So That's right. If you're not here as a, uh, as, as a way to learn or something, you just need to get this working, uh, you can just click it and it'll do it all for you. That's right, and this is uh, using the WPF uh, framework, and there are tools uh, for uh, developers and for IT pros who can build, the same build these same sorts That's of things. Cool. Yeah, so it just walks through. What we did is we looked at the, the top um, support calls that we get into Microsoft, and we did, I think, the top uh, 30, um, and we're going to be adding them uh, over time. Uh, so will those, will those sort of things get just added uh, downloads so you can add help and things like that? Yeah, this is a dynamic system, so we can we can be uh, adding right. to it. So if, if so, somebody starts hitting the help center a lot, you can you can switch over and start adding that into the help. Yeah, if there are new types of questions, uh, we can we can definitely definitely add that. So easier to use. Um, also, uh, one of the things I, I wanted to show is some of the, the security features. I, I know you, you've covered a bunch of those before, but I wanted to focus on a, a couple of important ones. One is, is going to be around uh, a safer browsing experience. And so we have um, uh, in Internet Explorer, we've got what uh, we call, uh, of course, the protected mode and the anti-phishing work that's going on. So let me show you a quick demo of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by going to one of these fantabulous offers that you get, one penny photos. I can get all the, the, the photos that I want for a penny. Obviously, uh, You're going to click on that for sure. Absolutely. I can't pass that up. Um, so the first line of defense here is you see you get this, uh, the, the gold bar here with a warning about an ActiveX control uh, potentially being downloaded onto the system. Um, but I really, and let's assume that uh, I really want to get these, these photos. So I'm going to go ahead and give that permission to run uh, on my system. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And what this actually did uh, in the background, what you know, a lot of these these uh, types of, of things do, is it actually put um, it actually dropped a, a file uh, into uh, my my startup directory. My uh, an e it dropped some evil in there, right? So um, you can see that uh, uh, we j it just got written in there. And the idea is that when I would start up, then um, this would run and, and do some nasty things to me. Um, what you can see, though, uh, what has happened with protected mode, i.e., what it's done is it, we, we write to uh, this virtual area. So this is using some of the user account control, uh, the account separation technologies. So i.e., by default, runs as... So uh, the fact that it says virtualized here, is that the, that's the part that's yeah. some special area? Yeah, you can see that it's, it's not actually in the start folder, but it's in this temporary internet files and virtualized area. And so anything coming off of the internet... Um, is going to go into this space, and this is an area that uh, you can't execute from. So, effectively, it's a safe sandbox for um, some, you know, anything nasty that comes down uh, off of the internet. So, so, if you double-click that file, will it will it not run? Then you said you can't execute from there. Is that what that means, or 
Uh, or is it that the code IE can't execute from there? I'm just... uh, this uh, IE can't execute from this space. So like this is actually not the startup space, the startup folder either. So when okay. when the PC boots up, um, it won't actually run. Um, the the third line fence here, and this is often a, a one of the ploys too, is is on a on a you know a request for help uh, from these sites. Um, they'll also try to uh, download something onto the system. And here, what this is going to show is uh, the integration of the Windows Defender product. And so, in addition to uh, these lines of defense um, that that we've uh, we've provided, we also have the ability uh, for Defender to look at uh, the files that are coming down, and if there are known adware, spyware. Um, simply remove them from the system. So you see three different levels of protection there. One is that IE is running in a, a least privileged state. Um, two, you've got virtualization going on for, for anything that's coming off of the internet. And then three, you've got the cleanup uh, capabilities of Defender built in. So, um, so there's really three layers of, of protection there around um, the, the browsing experience. All right, one of the things I want to talk about is some of the new entertainment features. And uh, one of the great things about Windows Vista is we, we announced some of the, the SKU plan, and it's going to bring together a lot of the great media uh, capabilities in the system uh, with a lot of the, um, some of the, 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 the new uh, mobility features as well. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Another great uh, entertainment feature is around the media player. And this uh, actually just went into beta. It's available uh, this week. They announced it, I believe, and, and it's available. One of the big things that's new about media player is the, the urge service that we've, we've worked on uh, with MTV. Um, and, and here, it's basically a huge library. They have one of the largest music libraries in the world. And it's a subscription, uh, uh, it's a subscription uh, type of a service where um, they do this great programming. Like one of my favorite things is, is the, the different playlists. And so because they have this huge library of, of, of songs that, of course, um, everyone has access to, what, you can, what they're able to do is, is create these different playlists. Oh, wow. So you have all these different. I'm not sure if everyone can see the names there, but we got like Green Day's playlist. We got all sorts of famous people here with their, their favorite music. Yeah, so they get to build these playlists, and it's a huge community of being able to pull from it. And you can, of course, you know, listen to you know, whatever is uh, top of mind for Green Day. The other thing that's super cool about this is if I want, for example, well, let's say I want Green Day's playlist, and I got my iRiver uh, clicks over here, I can just simply drag and drop the playlist over here, and it's going to sync uh, to to that device uh, automatically. And then you can keep that. You, you have this this huge library of music that uh, is basically programmed for all these different kinds of people. I've been listening to music that, uh, you know, I like the band like Green Day, but, you know, hey, what are they into? And you can listen to some of their inspirations, uh, some of the bands that inspired them. Um, and it pulls together all those different kinds of, of music that uh, really expose you to a lot of new stuff. It's your mobile device. So this, yeah. is, this is all um, like DRM music. Yep. And it's compatible with, uh, what is that? I'm not sure what it's called. I know Napster to Go was a branded version of it. Just the ability to actually pull it onto a Windows uh, media compatible device and, and carry it around with you? That's right. It's, uh, it's a place for sure device and it uses the DRM stuff from, from Microsoft. And the way that works is uh, I think it's after, I think it's like a 30 day period. Right. It, it needs so, to be connected. Every, so that's how it yeah. the, the Napster was. If you don't uh, connect it after a while, they just stop working on the device. But it's, it is quite a while, like 30 days. So. Yeah, and this is a great device too in terms of uh, the, I don't know if you, if you, I think you said you maybe have taken a look at this before, but just. Uh, um, I don't know if people have seen it. I, I've actually just seen it in our, our little company museum, uh, the visitor center. I've seen it. It gets everyone's attention. So, yeah, it's it's the, the navigation is sort of this, this pane that you kind of click up and down. Um, you can see, you know, side to side. I'm going to go up here and select playlists. Be able to play that and see. Is that, the, is that an available device or is this? Yeah, they, they just released it, and so uh, yeah, this is a slim, two gigabyte slim. device. It's uh, you know like a little pack of mints kind of right. size. So it's really cool. I love the plays videos and, and pictures too. So oh, it's very cool. Too. Yeah. So uh, it's very cool. Yeah, okay. we'll have to get uh, we'll have to get the chat line videos. Yeah, exactly. So, cool. So that's just some of, some of the some of the new stuff going on there. The device integration with Media Player here is is awesome. Uh, great plug and play. It even gives you this some great uh, uh, UI to show you how much uh, how much space you've got left on on the device. So um, very 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 great very cool stuff going on in, in the entertainment space. And of course um, this whole this whole library um, has the you know the quick search built in. So if I go to you know, Green Day. You can see, you know, that same the same way you do search uh, for for documents and, and uh, so the same search kind of metaphors and everything that you have throughout the rest of this to are right here. Yeah, as well. Absolutely. So, 
so 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 very cool stuff uh, coming together there. Um, let's take a look at um, some of the mobile uh, technologies and advancements there. So you know, Windows Vista is really. Now I only mentioned this when I walked in because I was kind of shocked, but this is a this is a gorgeous table. Oh, thanks. They got to make these standard <laughs> in all our offices or something because that's it's got the round Vista logo just uh, right on the table. Very cool. So this is a, a, a tablet um, that's made by a company called Motion, and it has uh, both, uh, of course, the, the, the digitizer for the pen, but it also has uh, touch integrated with it. This is the New York Times application I think you've, you've shown before, um, which is its great new uh, WinFX application that does all the great layout, and you can see how it's laying out here in portrait mode. But we'll, like, com combine that with the touch capabilities and being able to read a paper. Yeah, you bet. Read, just be able, to be able to navigate and read a paper. Like watch this, the, even the gestures, the forward and back capabilities as I'm swiping my finger across just as you would read a, read a paper. Um, so it's a great, I think, uh, you know, this is something we're going to be showing at, at WinHack. And uh, it just really highlights, I think, the combination of hardware and software working together. If I, if I reorient the screen, you can see how um, the, the WPF and the XPS uh, document format work together and to resize and reflow. Move the pictures somewhere else thinking that it would work better like that. And yeah, it just refloated automatically for me. Look at that. Um, cool. So yeah, it's a great, great way. I think great feature of, of how the software and the hardware is working together. Yeah, so uh, you here. basically hold this. You don't have to have the pen out. You don't have to have anything. You can just move around yeah, and read through the whole paper. <laughs> And uh, you're just doing it all with your hand. That's that's correct. Yeah, that's right. And, and no uh, no ink stains on your on your hand. That's right. That's right. It's perfectly clean. And even you know, this is really cool. You know, if you do want to use the pen, you know, here's that that you know the snipping tool that's integrated here. You be able to send that clip an article out, send it to a friend, no problem. Right. So that's that's very cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to show on this device is um, is Media Center, and so. The idea that you know we've got these these uh, these offerings in in Windows Vista where you know uh, home premium is an offering um, that has uh, the the tablet capabilities uh, and the media center capabilities built into it. Um, also, Windows uh, Vista Ultimate is a is a SKU that's got all of that plus all of the domain join and group policy and the the enterprise uh, capabilities uh, for a sort of a work from home scenario. Um, but the interesting thing is when you bring together um, the capabilities uh, of, of, of mobile and the media, um, and in particular when you, you're talking about a, a form factor like this, is the, the ability to navigate and look at, uh, at video in a, in, a, in a new way. So your, your tablet here has... Uh has ink and touch capabilities, and so as I said, like some of the premium SKUs in, in Windows Vista have this combination of the what was formerly the tablet functionality as well as the media center, and so you get this union of the two, um, where you know for consuming media and this this what we formerly called the 10 foot UI right. is is really quite nice when you're you're trying to you know use it with like your finger for example. It works well for the tablet. Yeah, so so like I come in here, I can go in and you know this is a great form factor for being able to consume media and, and look at um, you know, pictures and movies and so being able to, to, to interact with it in a very natural way like this is uh, is, is great that's cool yeah and so then uh, media center basically comes along with this OS it's not something you would just get if you're gonna hook this up to your TV and have this you know, sitting at home as your sort of media center, sort of the media hub. Yeah, that's right. I mean, in fact, we've seen a, a huge trend uh, among the OEMs of installing um, media center on laptop PCs. I, I've actually been seeing yeah. that's like the standard OS from a lot of people now as well. It's yeah, that's right. Media center for XP, so and for uh, Vista, I guess it'll continue in the same way. Yeah, I think so. And because I think this experience of, of consuming media in a mobile way is, is, is really uh, one, of the, one of the ways that people like to experience it while they're on a plane traveling or uh, even at work. Cool. Cool stuff. Yeah, thanks. Okay, the last, one of the last things I want to talk about is, is some of the <clears throat> great new stuff for the IT Pro and for developers. One of the big advancements is, is around um, deployment and management of the system. One of the, things, the ways that we are uh, deploying uh, and installing Windows around here is using some of the WDS, the deployment server uh, technologies. We're seeing uh, us being able to install Windows Vista and Office together and all the applications in 15 minutes. You can just plug in a PC, network boot it, and it drops an image uh, on there for you. So that's one thing. The other thing is greater uh, level of control uh, around, around the PC. And so 
um, great advancements in group policy and the ability to um, centrally manage PCs out there. And so for IT pros, this is great in terms of being able to uh, work and manage uh, the, the PCs in their network. For developers, you should think about, uh, you know, of course, extending and using group policy to manage uh, your applications. Here's one thing I'll show you. And I think is really important. You know, this is uh, this right here is one of the most dangerous things in all of IT, which is the, the USB drive. Um, you hear about these things uh, being lost or stolen uh, quite a bit in the news. But one of the things that we did here, as an example, in the group policies, we have a, actually a setting that allows people to control the use uh, of removable storage. And so, Can we um, music. Just, yeah, we're still playing playing Green Day's favorite, which are which are good. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Like in this case, what I can do is I can. Installation um, of the device is not to uh, describe other policies. Okay. Yes. So if you haven't explicitly said it's okay, it won't let you do it. Right. Or I can go down to device class. I can go down to device ID if there are specific ones that I want to set policies on. And so if I enable this policy, then um, it's gonna and I'll and I'll plug this in. It's going to. Um, try to install but deny it. And so it's just a way to, to give uh, IT pros more granular control. And they can even be um, very specific uh, about... Um, so we have our little device installation was prevented by policy. Yeah. And you click there to figure out who you need to yell at because you really, really wanted to hook up your exactly uh, your USB key. <laughs> and this goes down to like I said, you can you can you can do things like you can read from devices but can't write to them. You can um, you can specify the type of device. It can be a CD ROM, DVD ROM, and the like. Um, there's even uh, things in in policy here around like uh, power management and being able to centrally control like when a monitor turns off at night and what the like. And what we actually seen is a lot of uh, cost savings just. On, on if you power walk around on the, the halls screen. in an office, a lot of people don't have that on, and they have their machines on full all the time. So the company could actually insist that you've got a you know a 20 minute uh, power off or something or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's cool. So a lot. So about 3,000 new group policy settings in Windows Vista, and tools, search tools, and templates to help you uh, help you manage those. Another thing I'd point out um, that's important for IT pros and developers is um, the new eventing system. And so um, if, if you're not aware of this, um, this, is, this is an advancement in how we, uh, we actually report on the activity on a system. And so um, you know, one, there's, there's really a couple of new things here. One is um, the ability to uh, both uh, forward events, so being able to send events to a, a central location. Um, as well as uh, being able to uh, take advantage of the schema and the structure. We've schematized all of our events uh, in XML. And so, uh, for example, if I uh, take a look at um, one, of these, one of these logs here, I'll pull up a, a specific event uh, for you. And you can, uh, you can see here that um, these are all, uh, each of the events is in... <laughs> Just swung off on you there, but here we go. So um, I saw an XML view was one of the choices. Yeah, okay. each of the events um, here is in is fully schematized in XML, um, which gives you a structure that you can then parse programmatically and take a look at. And so we've done a couple of things. We've done some simple things here in the OS, like this reliability monitor, which aggregates events okay. and then gives you some telemetry data on the reliability of your system. And so um, this is a great tool for... Um, uh, like a help desk technician, if they're looking at a system, hey, what's gone on uh, on the system? What's what's uh, what's been happening uh, over time? Have there been specific software installs or uninstalls or applications that have caused uh, specific issues? Um, but what it highlights is the ability to aggregate all those events in a structured form and then be able to uh, create uh, some useful information. So this helps folks. You said this can all go to the central location, so mm -hmm. a person doesn't have to be pulling these individual machines. This reliability data could be all. Heading somewhere where the help desk could access it, you know, across all machines, for instance. Or? Yeah, probably what they'd use is like uh, some kind of a monitoring server, like a uh, like a, a mom server or a, a utility like that, that right. would pull them together and, and do some analysis on them. But um, you know, a couple things. One, if the events that you're writing out of applications, make sure that they're schematized so they can participate in all this, uh, and then. Secondly, if you're in sort of the, the, the management uh, or monitoring business, you know, if you're building software there, definitely take a look at the, the structure of those events and how you can use them uh, on the system. So, yeah, I think that, that is pretty cool. Last thing I'll mention is uh, in, in this space is some of the new uh, application compatibility tools that are, that are launching at Beta 2 as well. And 
what I'll, what I'll show you here is the, the app compatibility manager. Um, this is part of the Axe Toolkit or App Compatibility Toolkit. Um, and what it does is, is there's a couple of pieces here. One is there's an agent that you would deploy uh, on an XP system. So for IT pros, if you want to take a look at um, what's happening uh, in your environment, um, I deployed a, a, one of these uh, agents on my system uh, and gathered the data. It enumerates for you uh, all the, the applications uh, that are installed on the system, and it allows you to select um, the, the operate the the operating system that is your current one and then the target um, that you'd be moving to. And um, what this does is it provides you some nice reporting uh, out on all of the different applications and the status um, that they have uh, relative to their compatibility with okay. Windows Vista. Number of, number of issues I see there, you know, um, I see ratings as well, which is, is that compatibility based ratings or are these actual ratings? How much do you like these programs? There's two pieces. One is um, each individual uh, company, so like an IT pro could come in and assign their own rating to it. And then there's a community aspect, which where we aggregate um, data. So if, if you wish to participate in that community, you can upload that, that data uh, okay. to the community. We, we pull it all together. You know, this is a place where people can share um, what their experiences are with particular versions of applications, what uh, mitigations they might have you know, used, uh, like you know, have they shimmed an application or is there a slight change? Yeah. So how well did it work when they moved forward, problems they run into? So you can benefit from the you know, thousands and thousands of people who do it before you get to it. So. Exactly, exactly. And so, and so this is great, too, if you're an ISV and you want to take a look at uh, one of your applications, um, you know, install that application, run this tool, and then you can go and look in the community and see how, see how it's doing. Or running into yeah. and things like that, and perhaps you can offer some solutions. Yeah, and so this is the app compatibility toolkit. It's, it's uh, launching at Beta 2 as well. So some of the things that I think are, are, are really cool about um, what we've done in the IT and, and developer space, some things I would check out. Great, great. And so uh, Beta 2 is, yeah. is available, and uh, you mentioned before that MSTN subscribers, TechNet subscribers should be yep. able to, to get it. That's right. People need to check it out. Absolutely. You bet.